Turn six. Thank you. Keep change. Uh, illustrator. Charles. Charles. Nigel. Good man. So Sir Hubert phoned you. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Charles. Could you sub me ten bob? I had to leave in a fearful rush and won't take a check. Of course. I'll go to the bank as soon as we arrive. There's no banks where we're going. I'll get the tickets. See if you can find a port. Van, don't do this to me. Not today. I've made you some sandwiches, Miss Troy. <laughs> it only takes a couple of hours. But you're not expected until tea time. Yes, well, I thought I'd leave early, get to Frantic, see Uncle Hubert before the others arrive. And you'll want to change, no doubt. What do you mean? Well, for Mr. Allen. Don't be silly, Edith. you the war, Charles. The action. The people. I would have thought your gossip column was bloody enough. I need a big story if I'm going to get onto the news desk. Troy's guests a detective, I believe. He might be someone worth cultivating. That's all right, sir. Lunch doesn't bother me. Good man. Oh, sir. Inspector Foxes, I think. Marked confidential. That copies of the Racing Times. And a car at 4.30 for Liverpool Street, please. Troy's policeman yet, Rosamond. He's a chief inspector, Marjorie. And I really don't think they know each other that well. Oh, come now, Hubert wouldn't invite just anyone, would he, Arthur? His mother, Lady Allen's one of the Devonshires. His brother, Sir George, is an ambassador, I believe. Well, it's high time Troy found herself someone suitable. <laughs> come on now, Marjorie. We're the same age. Troy and I were at school together. Then you'll know what I mean.
Come in. Chaser. Thank you. Chief Inspector Allen's office. Um, well, he has a meeting at 4.30, sir. Yes, of course. Assistant Commissioner, sir, wants to see you at five. Well, thanks for trying. You miss the train, sir. And the next one, no doubt. Did you put acid in this? It's all right. Just needs a stir. Thank you, Sergeant. Good to see you so happy. We're getting engaged, but not a word till after the announcement. I always said you'd be first. <laughs> oh. mm. Didn't you say that your chief inspector was going to be on our train? Oh, he didn't really know when he could get away. You always did know what I'm thinking. And you are? Bathgate, sir. Our Rankin's cousin, yes, welcome. Glad you could make it. Very pleased to be here, sir. Good, good. Make yourself at home. Hello, Arthur. Charles, thank you, sir. Ah, uh, please, allow me to introduce Dr. Hans Hoffner. Nigel Bathgate. Exquisite, huh? Absolutely. Even an instrument of execution has its beauty, don't you think? Are you an expert, Doctor? Uh, an art historian, nearly. I am here to advise Sir Hubert with his collection, with his passion. This chain of art thefts, Alan, two Rembrandts, Dura Prince, religious statuary, the Botticelli triptych. Uh, triptych, sir. It's a painting in three parts. In this case... It's... Yes, well, whatever it is. And now this morning, a silver chalice from some convent in Norfolk. I see. You think they're connected? They're all owned by VIPs, very unimpressed by our lack of progress. And now there's a bishop breathing down the commissioner's neck, and he's breathing down mine. Sir, I'll um, look at the file first thing on Monday morning, sir. No, Alan, I want you on this chalice theft tonight. I am due to go away for the weekend, sir. I've already told the commissioner you're on your way. Come in, Fox. Sir. I've called Inspector Fox back from leave. I want the best possible team on this job. Thank you, sir. Sorry to see you back again so soon, bruh. Thank you, sir. 
My apologies, gentlemen, but we're all under some pressure here. Yes, of course. I was beginning to think you weren't coming. I would have telephoned, but, well, I wanted to see you. I'm afraid. There would have to be a reason for the serious suit. <laughs> I'm sorry, Troy. So, no weekend for you. The infuriating thing is I'll be quite close to here. I expect you'll be very busy. Yes, I expect I shall. Well, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. I almost forgot. It's your birthday. to come for a chalice. Chief Inspector, this is supposed to be a day of holiness and restoration. Some of these people have saved all year to come. I'm sure you'll be able to make the situation clear to the Reverend Mother. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, we need a list of everyone here and then we'll start taking statements. That's unthinkable. They're invalids, holy sisters. I'm afraid they still may be called upon to... Uh, Bear witness, Reverend Mother. Well, Doctor? He died of a broken neck. Rather expertly, I'd say. See the bruising here? I suggest a blow delivered by hand, no weapon. We'll have to have that confirmed by post-mortem, Doctor. Yes, of course, Inspector. And this... Slivers of glass, front and back. Well, he probably cut his hand taking the chalice. There's, there's blood on the altar. Well, not exactly a man of the cloth. Weekends of mine have acquired a certain reputation for their uh, dramatic quality. And in that pleasurable tradition, I propose that this weekend we play murder. Ah. <laughs> uh, over dinner tonight, Walters will pass one of you this red plaque. Mm. And then he or she will have until this time tomorrow to plan the murder. It all sounds rather bloodthirsty. The murderer must get the victim alone and say, you are the corpse. <laughs> and then we have to investigate who did it and how. Well, there's no lack of weapons in this house, Hubert. You must have a convincing motive, my dear, but no weapon. No. Oh. But I have something which could provide some inspiration. Might be of interest. It's beautiful. Quite incredible. Isn't it? 
How long, sir, have you had this? I saved a man's life. He, uh, he gave it to me to, uh, to show gratitude. He'd been left for dead in some sort of brawl. About the time we were in Germany, Hubert. You were well rewarded, Charles. But your ownership, sir, is, is totally inappropriate. This is a rare medieval reliquary. Look here. The gold handle chased with rubies. And within it, he sealed a fragment of a saint's bone. <laughs> Must be worth more than I thought. A fortune, certainly. But it is its unique religious significance which makes it priceless. I... I can help you return it to its rightful owner, Mr. Rankin. <laughs> oh. I can't afford your principles. Besides, there must be one or two collectors who would revere the dagger. And appropriately, don't you think, Sir Hubert? It would be the prize of anyone's collection. Was the chalice always kept in there, Reverend Mother? No, it had been in the sister's private chapel. I see. Why was it moved? Well, we hold these healing services every year, Chief Inspector. The papal chalice has always been associated with miracles. Sin right to use it today. Do you mean that you hadn't used it before? No, it was only given to us recently, anonymously, uh, for the private use of our order. Cheese, sir. Rather, thank you. Oh, Barkay's made a good meal. And it's so hard to get round rationing in town. You should consult Marjorie. She seems inventive enough when it comes to clothes. I should ask you to step outside for slandering your wife like that, Arthur. It'd be a pleasure, I assure you. It's all talk and no action. It's been the same ever since we were boys. <laughs> <laughs> Conceding gracefully has always been one of Arthur's better qualities. Sir? Oh, no, I do not care for cheese. I wasn't joking, Hubert. What? If I get the plug, I shall give it back. <laughs> Very good, my dear. Strategic lying is all part of the game. And you could always be murdered instead. Ah. I'm serious, Hubert. I want no part of it. Oh, Marjorie. I'd rather watch. <laughs> now we know you're play-acting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all just a bit of fun, isn't it? And personally, I'd rather be in the thick of it. Uh, you always were a game, Rosamond. Madam. No, thank you, Walters. All this murderous talk has quite taken away my appetite. You rather enjoyed it. Arthur's getting suspicious. So? Look, you must tell me how things stand between Rosamond and you. Rosamond has no reason to know anything. How can you be so cruel? Come here. Let me go. You usually can't have enough. <laughs>
Got him, sir. Our deceased monks are Corporal Albert Billings, who deserted the army in 46. He's got a record to match. Breaking and entering, robbery with firearms. 46? Why desert in peacetime? I say, Troy, I wondered if I might take you out for a drink to celebrate. That rather depends on what everybody else is doing. Uncle? Uh, oh, whatever you like, my dear. Uh, Chief Inspector Allen, sir. Allen? I thought he couldn't make it. Perhaps the case is over. Happy birthday. Still the serious suit? I'm afraid so. Alan! Sir Hubert? Detective Chief Inspector Alan, Scotland Yard. Good to meet you at last. I'm sorry, it has to be over a professional matter, sir. Oh. But a man's been found murdered at St Mary Magdalene's convent. Oh, dear. And how can I help? Come along, Nigel. I'll show you the village and you can buy me that drink. All right, Hoffman. You were stationed in Hamburg in 46, sir. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, so was the murdered man. A corporal Billings. He was under your command, I believe. Billings? No, uh, I don't think so. There were so many. Oh, morning, Charles. Tell me, does the name Corporal Billings ring a bell? Chap's been murdered. I'm sorry, I can't say it does. Ohne Gewalt. Es plus mir. Solange du tust, was ich sage, geht nicht schief. Wo genau ist du Deutsch? In Reinkindzimmer. Das ist gut. Cool. Don't act the innocent with me, Rankin. To get that dagger, you beat Billings within an inch of his life. He deserted from a German hospital bed, man. For someone who claims not to know him, you know a great deal about him. Shouldn't you have told the inspector? I've a good mind to... Billings told me he was on his way to you with the dagger. When I... bumped into him. You won't get away with this, Rankin. Oh, come on, Hubert. You're just relieved someone got rid of him for you. about its history. No records were kept up as one of the conditions of the gift. Well, I, I suppose I could speak to the bishop. He knows nothing about it, Chief Inspector. I'm on support to a rather higher authority. <laughs> Turn it down a bit. 
you'd like to be dancing with your wife. Not at all, please. Carry on. No, no, I insist. You know Arthur can't dance, Charles. In which case, it's high time he learned. Don't ask, Charles. Now, now, come along. Don't be shy. Charles, please. If I didn't know it was useless, I'd call him your debt. Well, I'm terribly sorry, but most of the money's tied up in the household, man. Still, you'll receive your reward in heaven. Ross. Uh, I say, Charles, old chap. Uh, if things... If things really are that tight, uh, I'm sure I could help. Very good of you. The dagger. Uh, yes, what about it? Well, you know I want it. I rather think the price went up today, don't you, Sir Hubert? Very well. We'll talk about it later. No, no, no. Let's talk about it now. You've all seen the dagger? What do you think? Should I sell it to Sir Hubert? Oh, don't be such a ham, Charles. Please, sir, don't even consider it. The doctor's right. The dagger's not for sale. Oh, come off it. What use is it to you? I shall keep it. For sentimental reasons. Oh, seriously, Charles. Seriously? But wait, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, listen, everyone. In the spirit of brothers in arms, the dagger's yours. I'll leave it to you. Very well. But put that in writing. Pull up a chair. I hope you like spam fritters. Look what the men found in the convent grounds. Well, well. So our murderer likes a dash of theatricality, does he? Good. Anything else? Yes. Something on the corpse, sir. The doctor was right. Her post-mortem confirms it was a hand blow to the neck. And there's a small compact contusion there. A ring? Probably. My guess, something embossed, worn on the little finger. Already down here, Sir Hubert. When the top floor window's done? Yes, sir. Lawrence has seen to it. Good. <laughs> we keep the curtains closed so it creates the right atmosphere for the game, you see? Now, one of us now knows that he or she is the murderer. Now, remember, when the lights go out and you hear the gong, count to ten to give the killer time to get away from the scene of the crime, eh? I refuse to be left alone with anyone. Come on, Troy, I'm going up to change. Am I forgiven? Then, if I'm done away with, everyone will know it's you. Ladies, please allow me to escort you to your rooms. Oh, wait, wait, I'm coming too. <laughs> Here. Hubert, you shall see how well the dagger sits in your collection. The weekend at least. If you'll excuse me. The headache. Do you want to talk? Yeah, I'll be all right. It's nothing, Troy. Honestly.
look at this. <laughs> Mr. Rankin, I wish to apologize for my outburst yesterday. My expression, I think, was somewhat clumsy. But the fact remains, sir, that you have no moral right to that dagger. Morals be damned, but that was given to Charles. Shouldn't you be frightened to be left alone with me, Arthur? On the contrary, Charles, you're my alibi. Ah, yes. Let's have another drink. I'm going to be very late for dinner. Not for me, thanks. Marjorie has a thing about punctuality. You finished in here, Barkin? Yes, thanks. Get them yourself, Arthur. Stay single, Nigel. You'll get better service. Don't really mean that. Oh, Mary, before you go down, see if Miss Grant needs a hand and tell her I'm fetching some aspirin. Yes, Miss Agatha. Florence has bought some towels, darling. Then perhaps you should send her in. Come in. Anything else, sir? Oh, thank you. Uh... Florence, sir. Florence. I don't suppose you could help me with this damnable tie. I don't like to ask anyone else. I feel rather a fool. Of course, sir. Arthur, hurry up in there. You'll be the last one. This is most awfully kind of you. It's a pleasure, sir. Ah, oh, just a minute. What should we do now, sir? Hang on. The light should come on again in a minute. Come on, Barbagate, let's investigate. If you don't, I'll know you're the murderer. OK, Arthur. Hurry up, Uncle Hubert. The others must be going down. Arthur, don't go down without me. Just stay near me, darling. Please, we should go down now. <laughs> Arthur, be careful. <laughs> Trust old Charles to make a meal. Charles, he looks so uncomfortable. Put him out of his misery. Oh, come on, Charles. What are you waiting for us? Put on the lights somehow, dear. Oh, I'll do it. Hubert is terribly shocked. Dr. Reed naturally left where it was. The body's already been moved, Chief Inspector. By who? Look, Alan, I do apologize. I had him moved. It was too distressing for the women. I'm very sorry. I'll be with you shortly, Sir Hubert. Dr. Eden, I apologize. He's been dead for a maximum of 40 minutes, Chief Inspector. This is what did the damage. 
the blade was angled through the third and fourth ribs. It appears the heart was remarkable. I'd say almost medical accuracy. Death would have been instantaneous. Forgive me, but this accuracy, couldn't that have been by chance? It's rather unlikely, Inspector. And one other thing. The body had already been examined before I arrived. What? By one of the guests. A Dr. Hans Hoffner. Disinfectant, honestly. Sir Hubert didn't waste any time, did he? Oh, they missed this. Must have been his glance. Well, looks as if he's had some company. I don't know. Fire on in summer, curtains drawn. Sergeant, can we have some light on the subject? Uh. Mr. Troy says when she went to the front door, she found it unlocked. Most unusual for this time of evening, apparently. I was in my room the whole time, Chief Inspector. I was singing arias from the marriage of Figaro. The others must have heard me. Uh, yes. I did, Doctor, and so did Mary, one of the chambermaids. We shall have to take statements from you all, ladies and gentlemen. It would also be extremely helpful if you could stay until after the inquest in a few days' time. Oh, absolutely. And, of course, you must all stay on here. I insist. My wife will be down in a moment. I'm sure I can speak for us both. For me, it would be a great inconvenience. Come along now, Doctor. <sighs> Very well, then. Thank you. <laughs> That's too ironic, isn't it? I'm sorry, but what do you mean? Such a cruel parody of that wretched game. We were playing murder. The game was about to begin. Who was the murderer? I was, Chief Inspector. Uh, Look, I can see what you think. As chief beneficiary, I must have the prime motive. But I didn't do it. Honestly. During the time it took between your going upstairs and the gong being struck, Mr. Bathgate, did you stay in your room? Yes. I was talking to Arthur through the bathroom door. He was in the bath. He'll tell you. We were sharing the one bathroom. Arthur... Mr. Wilde. So Mr. Wilde was there all the time? That's right. And his wife. I could hear them talking a lot. Oh, and Florence, the maid, came in. What time was that? Approximately. I know exactly. The whole clock was just starting to chime. Eight o'clock. Really? And where did Florence go after that? She stayed. Helped me with my bow tie. She was still there when the lights went out. Was she? Well then, Mr. Bathgate, it would appear that you have an alibi. Yes. I suppose I have. Walters was bringing Mr. Rankin another drink when I went upstairs. Then when I was in my bath, I talked to my wife. And Bathgate, too, on the other side. Is that when the lights went out? Arthur! Help! Where are you? Where do you think, my dear? My wife's a rather a nervous disposition, Inspector. At that point, you went out onto the landing. Well, I thought the blackout must have been a mistake. If 
I could get out there in the dark, it'd be a good chance to claim my victim. For the game. I see. So, then Sir Hubert had the body moved? No. Well, who touched it first, Mrs. Wilde? Me. It was me. I'm sorry, but when I saw him lying there, I... No! 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 Come on. This won't help. Mr. Walters, can you explain why the front door was left unlocked this evening? I told you to do that, Mary. But I did. I'm sure. What are you saying? The inspector's lying? No. But I... Mary. Did you meet with Miss Troy upstairs? Yes. She told me to go to Miss Grant's room, though it weren't my place to. Were you with her when the lights went out? No. I stayed there. But Miss Grant wasn't in her room, Inspector. Rox. Rox, where are you going? To my room. Nothing to say. But we all have to be interviewed. It's too late for talking. Has Miss Grant had a word with you, sir? Only to say nothing. Well, I think they're all playing it pretty close to the chest, including Miss Troy. Morning, Vicar. Hmm. Have we upset the church? Oh, we've kicked out his Sunday school. You each have our cross to bear. Thank you, sir. Once they finish setting up, get Sergeant Cook back to the convent. You and I get back to Frantic Hall, get Bailey to do his stuff. Thank you. Is there a connection between the two murders? We have two dead bodies. That's all we know. Makeup on the jacket, sir, and uh, scent too. I'll have them tested, but I'm pretty sure the scent's Goya. I think that might be Mrs. Wilde. Uh, no, sir. Miss Rosamond Grant. Good Lord. Troy, does that sound likely? I really couldn't say. All right, let's have a look. Tweezers. Yeah. Description of the stolen chalice. 
under Hoffner's mattress. Oh, my money's been on him from the start. Look at these lists. Well, they're in German, of course, but... Paintings, porcelain, 16th century statues, late medieval Italian reliquary, icons. Must be over a hundred pieces in all. Well, could be to do with his research. They could be stolen. But, Bailey, do you think you could have them photographed and get them back into his room as quickly as possible? Oh, well, sir. Found this. Down the back of the bottom drawer. Well, well. Looks familiar. Something fits. Hello. We were just uh, looking about, and this must have fallen from somebody's pocket. Does anyone recognize it? Could it be Troy's? Isn't it yours, Marjorie? Didn't you tell me on the train that Charles gave them to you? Yes. And now I've lost one. When was that, Mrs. Wilde? Since we arrived. I'm not sure. Excuse me. Excuse me. Why do you let everyone else see how you feel, but you won't even talk to me? You're the last person, Arthur. So it seems. You should hate me. How could I? And him. All I feel is sadness. How long had it been going on? It was just a stupid fling. It was over, Arthur. I didn't even know he'd be here. Forgive me, darling. <laughs> Are you vain enough to complain, I wonder? No, of course not. I'm flattered that you've found time to draw me. Faint praise indeed. Who's this? Oh, just someone I saw in the pub garden with Dr. Hoffner. Why, do you know him? I'm not even sure if I'd recognize him again. Perhaps this will help you. Did he give you his name? No, Chief Inspector. I did not either. But you bought a man a drink. This conviviality of strangers makes your pubs famous, does it not? Can you tell me nothing that might help me trace him? We talked about the vessel. So, that makes him English, hmm? Now, if you'll excuse. Alan, uh, often is a touch volatile, but he's straight as a die. How well do you know him, sir? Hans? Oh, we're not close friends, more business associates. He's been helping me to classify my collection. He lives absolutely for his work. Who is that? I was rather hoping you might tell me. Pages have survived quite well. 
hall, stairwell, six bedrooms, precise plan of frantic hall. And uh, this. Vierundzwanzig Westgarten. <laughs> Twenty-four Westcourt Gardens, Kensington. I'm sorry to disturb you, ladies and gentlemen. I was hoping to speak to Dr. Hoffner. I'm afraid he didn't join us for dinner. Walters asked Dr. Hoffner if he'd kindly come down, will you? Dr. Hoffner left in a taxi mid-afternoon, sir. His room's empty. Oh, he never said a word. Did he give you any idea where he was going? No, sir. Do you have his home address, please, sir? I only ever got in touch with him at hotels in London. Which ones? Oh, they were always different. I rather doubt if I've kept a note of them. Could you check, please, sir? We usually got in touch by telephone. He'd ring me. Dr. Hoffner did work for you, sir. I find it hard to believe he'd be quite so elusive. Believe what you like, Alan. You'll kindly modify your tone. uncle's fault that Hoffner's bolted. I wasn't suggesting that it was. You shouldn't have let him get away. Troy, I shall assume that you're upset. Yes, and so's my uncle. Well, getting people to tell the truth isn't always pleasant. Have you considered the possibility that you might have got it wrong? Chief Inspector. How can I help you? Reverend Mother, would it shock you to learn that the stolen chalice was itself stolen? Are you sure? We have it on a list of stolen treasures. All looted. Monasteries, museums, art galleries. In a war. Reverend Mother, I'd be grateful if you'd take a look at these photographs. Have you seen either of these men before? Take your time. I don't suppose Sir Hubert realised the chalice was stolen, do you? Oh, no, I'm sure not. You've tricked me, Chief Inspector. I asked you for the truth, Reverend Mother. When it wasn't mine to give. But it was Sir Hubert who donated the chalice. He made me promise not to tell anyone. Hello? Inspector Parks? Yes? This is Miss Nellie Weston at the post office. Miss Weston? I think I might have some important information for you, Inspector. Please go ahead. It's rather delicate. Do you think you could come round? Yes, of course. The role of your unit in Hamburg, Sir Hubert, was to relocate art treasures. 
Now, all the occupying forces did their bit to sort out the chaos. But you took a, a special interest. The chalice came my way, and I decided to pass it on to the convent on my estate. I had no intention of keeping it. The plain fact is you abused a position of trust and responsibility. No, it wasn't like that. And looted things you were supposed to be protecting. Damn you, Alan. I wasn't doing it for myself. Please. The chalice and, uh, and the other things, well, at least I was keeping them safe. Things were disappearing, being melted down. It was dreadful. You broke the law, Sir Hubert. Yes, I suppose that's how it must seem. Tell me about Corporal Billings. He was my driver. He ran certain errands for me. He did damn well out of it. Perhaps he didn't think so. Is that why he was trying to steal back the chalice? Perhaps it was more convenient to have him out of the way. Dead. What? No! When Rankin refused to give you what you wanted, well, that gave you a very strong motive for getting rid of him. Absolutely not! What do you take me for? A fanatical collector who can't distinguish between right and wrong. No. Who'll stop at nothing for a piece of art. I would never have killed for it. Never! You'll appreciate, Inspector, that the switchboard involves a high degree of confidentiality. Oh, understood, ma'am. But this morning, I accidentally overheard a call from Frantock Hall. It sounded most suspicious. Who was the call to? Do you know? It was a Hampstead number. A Mrs. Sandilands. A maid answered, said her mistress was gone till tomorrow. Then it went all peculiar. Please destroy parcel in Tunbridge and don't tell a soul. Can you describe this voice from the hall? A lady. Nicely spoken. Thank you, Miss Weston. Your help has been invaluable. Well, rest assured, Inspector, I shall regard it as my duty to oversee all calls in future in the interests of your investigation. Sir? Sir? The address in Hoffner's burnt papers. The house belongs to a Mr. Dieter Krantz. A big wheel in the art world, apparently. You're flattering him, really. Well, you know him, sir. He's notorious. Well, he was a bloke drinking with Hoffner. How do you know? Miss Troy's sketch. She caught him exactly. Well, if you could give me a piece of the bell, I'm sure, sir. Yeah, of course. Right, I'll just make that. There. There was a call from Frantock Hall this morning. A woman's voice. I was wondering if Miss Troy might be able to help us. Would you like me to have a word with her? Are you trying to tell me I'm losing my objectivity, Brian? Oh, no, sir. But they're her friends and relatives. It can't be easy for her. I had to push him, Troy. How would you feel if it was someone you loved? It's my duty. My uncle had nothing to do with this. Rory, he just wouldn't. I wish you'd speak up about everyone so candidly. I'm not sure what you mean. I need to know more about her and Charles Rankin. Then you must ask her. She won't talk to me. Nor me. But why? <sighs> Please. Roz is a dear friend. Please don't ask me to speculate. But you have a duty to help me with what you know. Rankin's jacket showed traces of Marjorie's powder and Rosamond's scent. I need your help, Troy. They were both in love with Charles. 
I only discovered about Marjorie the night we came down here. I had no idea Rankin had been leading them both along. Strange thing was, when they left, another person slipped out of the room. You think it was Rosamond? I... I don't know. Well, did she know about Rankin and Mrs. Wilde? Well, I'm confused. She seemed so happy when we first arrived. So a discovery like this would have been a terrible shock to her. You're just guessing. Well, enough to make her do something desperate. No, not Roz. How can you be so sure? It's just inconceivable. This phone call was made this morning by a woman from this house. has a dressmaker called Mrs. Sanderland. Or a friend, really. What about Tunbridge? Do the Wilds have a house there? I'm quite sure they don't. But what could she want destroyed so badly? Bathgate. Well, Walters, explain yourself, or you can think about it in a cell. It was that Dr. Hoffner, sir. What about him? <laughs> Yesterday, before he skipped it, he told me to find out anything I could. Where is Dr. Hoffner? I don't know. He hasn't been in touch since. You unlocked that door, Mr. Walters, and you just pinned the blame on me. Is that true, Walters? Rory, I'm sure that if I could look around Marjorie's flat, I could solve this Tunbridge business. Good heavens, Troy, no. But I could get in without exciting attention. It's out of the question. You said you wanted my help. Chief Inspector Allen? Brer, what news? All arranged, sir. Nine o'clock. Yeah. Better say you're joining me for dinner. If you insist. I'll meet you at the pub. And you're not going in that. Why not? If you're so determined to come, you'll come with me.
Yes, please. I need to collect some more clothes for Mrs. Wilde. Before we get down to business, there is someone to be interested to meet. Dr. Hoffner. Hans, are you out of your mind? Chief Inspector Allen is here to facilitate a business transaction, Hans. We shall both require your help. Don't look so startled, Doctor. Surely, as a... A lover of fine things, you can appreciate a policeman with, what shall we say, expensive tastes. In my life, Chief Inspector, I've had to face many reassessments. Dr. Hoffner might feel more reassured once you have presented your credentials, Mr. Allen. By all means. were you proposing, Mr. Allen? I prefer to talk about an exchange. An exchange? For what? The papal chalice. That is out of the question. Quiet, hands. What if I don't have it? In that case, nothing doing. Before we make any hasty decision, Mr. Allen, I would like Dr. Hofner to authenticate the stagger. Of course. is a Saint Michel dagger. The monastery will be overjoyed. You are giving it back to them? Of course. This had been in their custody for centuries. And I suppose you'll be well paid for it, Doctor. That's more my preoccupation, Alan. I am commissioned to trace and bring back such items. Of the chalice? Kranz, that is not yours to barter this. As you can see, Mr. Allen, uh, the doctor is an idealist. <laughs> Please.
Well, I must congratulate you on this common job, Herr Kranz. Praise indeed. A common thief turning up rather inconvenient. What? A complete amateur. He didn't stand a chance. <laughs> but Kranz, you said that... He was in the way. Well, there you are, you see. A professional can deal with anything. Unlike you, Dr. Hoffner. What are you saying? Well, you rather bungled the theft of the dagger, didn't you? You think that I murdered Rankin? No, no. Kranz, tell the chief inspector all about it. You fool. Believe me, Alan, if I had got into the house, the dagger would have been stolen cleanly, <laughs> not left behind. business with you, Herr Kranz. Yeah. Dr. Hoffner. Look, this is a terrible mistake. I thought you had more sense. It's nothing to do with me. Hoffner. Hoffner! He's not a policeman. But Alan does know him. I don't know what this sniveling hack is doing here, but leave him to me. I'll see he says nothing. Get him there. There's no need for that. He's not worth it. I hope you're not trying to fool me, Alan. Go on! Back as much as you can, Hoffner. You too, Bryant. And you, Chief Inspector, are going to help me get out of here. got it all wrong. I was looking for an address when all the time it was a box. But what about Tunbridge? That's the kind of box. Tunbridge Ware, it's a sort of wood inlay. Of course. But I feel awful taking Marjorie's letters. Troy, I'm hoping that'll help us get to the truth. We still don't know who killed Charles Rankin. Here. Oh, there you are. Look, I know it's late, but... Are you up to driving, Mr. Basket? Snivelling little hat, don't you mean? If you're asking us to leave, I can drive. I'm sure you can. And, um, thank you for dinner, Chief Inspector. No surprises, Chief Inspector. Charles Rankin left his cousin, Nigel Bathgate, his entire estate. Apart from a few minor bequests. I see. Mr. Bennington, did Charles Rankin have any enemies that you know of? Well, he was a popular sort of chap. 
particularly with the ladies, of course. <laughs> yes. Did he confide in you? Oh, only recently. He consulted me about making a future marriage settlement. Was it to Miss Rosamond Grant? Yes. But less than a week ago, he said his plans were to be temporarily postponed. Why? In his own words, he confessed he'd been caught cheating and made an enemy of the woman who still loved him. So she might have felt that if she couldn't have him, no one else would. Roz? Roz, where are you going? Let me be, Troy. I've got to figure it out for a few hours. I'm suffocating. I'll come with you. No. Why are you doing this, Roz? It looks as if you have something to hide. Troy, I have. Don't, don't shut me out. Chief Inspector Allen is your friend. How can I confide in you? Oh, Roz, do you really think our friendship means so little to me? You were in Charles's room just before he died, weren't you? I had to talk to him, Troy. He had been deceiving me with Marjorie. Oh, my God, what have I done? And I don't know if he loved me at all. Not the smallest thing in his will, Troy. Not a sign. He couldn't acknowledge me. Not even when he was dead. So you finally decided to tell the truth. What would you know about that? Charles was just using you. It was me he loved. He finished with you. He used to joke about your clothes, called you Madame Pompadour. He'd loved me for years. No. And that's what you couldn't stand. Stop it! Oh. No! Is she often violent? No. It's so unlike her. Ros doesn't usually make a show of her feelings. She's obviously very upset. Well, she attacked Mrs. Wilde. I've helped you all I can. On your own terms? Rory, these are people I care about. Which may mean you're not the best judge of them. Yes, well, you've already proved that, haven't you? I'm simply trying to assemble the facts. Rosamond Grant does not have an alibi. She makes no attempt to provide one, and now it seems she's every reason to... No, you're wrong. I know I shouldn't have done this. I know I should have told you before. I took this from Rankin's room the morning after the murder. It's Rosamond's. This is withholding evidence, Troy. Yes, I know. But... You see, Ross told me she was waiting to face Rankin in his room that night. You see, this proves it. She couldn't... Miss Grant will have to tell me this herself. Well, anything else you haven't told me? Only that Ross couldn't have murdered Charles. She really loved him. Well, I'm sorry, Troy, but in my experience, love is a very powerful motive for murder. Ah, 
There's nothing wrong with that. Now look here, Chief Inspector. I thought you'd finished with our rooms. Mr. Wilde, when you were in the bath, where was your wife? Here, to start with. Most of the time in the bedroom. Was she in there all the time? I don't understand. Well, would you have noticed, for instance, if she slipped out? I won't have this. I'm her alibi, I've told you. And Bathgate, too. He heard her. Ah, oh, yes, of course, Mr. Bathgate. You heard Mrs. Wilde talking all the time? Well, not exactly. But I did, damn you! Forgive me, we've all been under a lot of stray. The point I'm trying to suggest, Mr. Wilde, is that your wife actually doesn't have a complete alibi. No, stop your investigation now, Chief Inspector. I killed Rank. How did you do that, Mr. Wilde? This is ludicrous, Arthur. You were in the bath. It's very understandable, Mr. Wilde, but aren't you playing rather a foolish game? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Come in. Huh. I wondered if I might have a word, Sir Hubert. Of course, dear boy. Come in. about the dagger, sir. Ah, yes, yes. I've had a word with Bennington. Charlie's bequest is quite legal, he tells me. That's what I wanted to talk about. Ah, uh, look, Bathgate, I realise that all Charles's things should go to you, but I'm sure we can come to some sort of understanding. I hope so, sir. I'm prepared to offer you a fair price. It's a matter of honour. No, Sir Hubert, it's not that. I was hoping you'd agree to return the dagger to its original owner, <laughs> the San Michel Monastery. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> uh. What's going on? Could you all come down for a moment, please? I need some help. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I need a volunteer. Mr. Bathgate, perhaps? What for, Chief Inspector? I'm trying to establish how it was possible for the murderer to leave his or her room Come down here, kill Mr. Rankin, and then return so quietly, unobserved, in a very short space of time. Oh, it's horrible. Come along now, Nigel. We must all help. Thank you, Mr. Wilde. Sir Hubert, would it be possible to make the clock strike eight? <gasps> what is it, my dear? The dagger. It's back where it was. Well spotted, Mrs. Wilde. Now, from what you've all told me, the murder must have taken place in the time it took the clock to strike eight. That's not possible, surely. Well, that's what we have to find out. Mr. Bathgate, I'd like you to go upstairs to the door of your room. When you hear the clock start to strike, I want you to run down, grab the dagger, stab Sergeant Bailey, make to switch off the lights, and then run back upstairs as fast as you can. Have you no feelings, Chief Inspector? Charles was his cousin. Sing out when you're ready, Mr. Bathgate.
See, not long enough. Thank you, Mr. Bathgate. I suppose there's one other way we could try. Mr. Wilde, I wonder, would you mind? I doubt if I could manage it any faster. This time, carry the dagger up with you. What? You might try a faster way of coming down the stairs. How do you suggest? Slide down the banister? <laughs> I think I'm a bit stiff in the joints for doing that sort of thing. Which is why I'm not trying it myself. <laughs> It'd be rather easier for a woman, I imagine. Side saddle. That's it. Well now, Mr. Wilde, let's see. How would you do it? Well, you left Charles Rankin down here. You picked up the dagger. And you went upstairs to your bathroom. You made sure that Mr. Bathgate and your wife knew that you were there. Stay single, Nigel. You'll get better service. You don't really mean that. Then, having made sure your wife was in her bedroom, you looked for her gloves. You found only one. You took it and ran out across the landing. All the time, your wife hadn't realized you were no longer in the bathroom. Arthur, hurry up in there. Swiftly, silently, you were down in no time. And you plunged the dagger into Charles Rankin's back. You switched off the lights, and you ran back upstairs to your bathroom before the clock had done striking. You threw the glove onto the fire. Well, Mr. Wilde, have I left anything out? even try to hide your sordid little affair. And you let him. You tortured me, Marjorie. No. And then you squandered my money just to please him. No, Arthur, listen. He deserved to die, and you should take the blame. That's enough, sir. Come along now. Thank you very much. Rory, 
Those letters from Rankin, Marjorie wanted destroyed so badly. Wilde had already read them. We found his fingerprints on them and uh, matched them to his tooth mug. We won't be needing this any longer. Thank you. We will try again, won't we? Um, dinner or something. Yes, that'd be nice. Perhaps next time you'll leave that serious suit at home. <laughs> 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 